interesting part here, really why I decided to make this video. Um, I want to drill a hole which is 120 degrees off from this hole for the angle I need to make this. So it's 120 degrees around here, that angle here, 120 degrees. So I want to do that on the work, um, but I couldn't work out how to rotate it a whole 120 degrees and be able to measure it. So instead I've, measured, I've uh, adjusted it to 60 degrees and we'll drill the hole right through and the drill on the hole on the other side will be 120 degrees. The one on this side is actually only 60 degrees. So I need to um, loosen the work of course to, to uh, get this angle and then tighten so it. I put a rod in the hole so I can check its angle, uh, the first hole, and now I'll be drilling the second hole straight through from here. And I'm using a protractor set at 60 degrees to get the angle of this rod correct. So here we can see, we should be able to see that it is correct at 60 degrees angle there. As they say in the sewing world, measure twice and cut once. So I'm checking again and just put the center in the tail stop and checking that that appears to be in the right spot halfway across the diameter and halfway along the length so we can check that with a vernier caliper and it's okay. So now switching to a five millimeter drill I'm intending to drill this hole right through the block and out the other side and that'll give me the 120 degree angle I need for the rods. The rods are quarter inch so I'll then turn the work around and drill a quarter inch hole back from the other side halfway through but from this side I'll have a five millimeter hole and I'll use that to tap and place a grub screw in there to hold the vertical shaft so it's serving two purposes. Okay just bought a new tap and I'm going to release the brake on the um, tailstock and bring it up to the work here and just get it started. I don't need to have the tailstock locked because I want it to be able to move as the tap cuts in and uh, I just push on the tailstock while rotating the work and get the tap started. I'm not going to go all the way in, it seems to be rather difficult to do that on the lathe. Once I'm satisfied it's started, I simply need to release the chuck. Breaks off and pull the tailstock back and there we have our work with the tap in place and I'll just take it out of the chuck and do the rest of the tapping by hand. And the method for using a manual tap is to turn it about a quarter or a half a turn and then turn it back a bit and turn again an extra half a turn and then turn it back half a turn or more and then go forwards another half turn. And the reason for doing this is that when you turn it back you're breaking off the chips. You can actually feel it breaking the chips off. If you don't do this the chips get caught underneath the um, teeth of the tap and uh, tear up the thread. You don't notice it with an internal thread like this, but on an external thread you can see the thread gets completely messed up by chips if you don't do this reversing process. So here's the object of the stage. I've now uh, drilled and tapped that hole, and the other hole just has the bar go through it. But this hole, the other end, we've drilled through from the tap, See on this side there's a tapped hole and this side is just a five millimeter, millimeter drilled hole. I've got to open that up to a quarter inch so I can fit a brass bar in it. So we put it back in the chuck. Now this is the trickiest part to do is um, getting this thing lined up correctly and should be able to, theoretically should be able to do it just by sitting the work on the, on the drill like so. So I've got the Piece of metal sitting here on the on the five millimeter drill, which was used to drill the hole, and it should just slip straight into the cut flat into the chuck. Sure enough, it does actually. And the trouble is when you tighten it, it um, might get a little bit out of alignment. Theoretically, that should be lined up perfectly there, and it's now when I try to slide forwards, that the drill is actually hitting it. So I'm going to have to make a few adjustments, and I'll just do that manually, spin it around a bit, see if I can spot where the problem is. 
so you can put it in back here. So slow it right down. There's two levers. This lever pulls back towards me. Come on. And this one does go to the left, and then it's in back here, which is a very slow speed. I'll try and spot where it needs to be adjusted to get it centered. Now I'm satisfied that that's centered. Looks really good. Although the drill will probably still jiggle around a bit. Seems to do a good enough job. So now we put the quarter inch drill and open it out to quarter inch ready for those brass shafts, brass rods. Essentially finished at the stage, but I've got the next project is to put on the grub screws, drill and tap those. Um, let's go check key. Let's at the bottom doesn't really matter at this stage, since this is the last one. Okay. There is another way to get a 120 degree angle and that is the self-centering three jaw track. The jaws are at 120 degrees and could be used as an indexing tool. Either just clamp it tightly onto the shaft so that the jaws leave some marks on the material or otherwise set up a stop so, you, so that uh, the jaw hits the stop. And move the stop to 120 degrees and then allow the next jaw in the series to stop. And that's, because that's an alter, another alternative way of getting 120 degrees. Now for drilling an off-center hole for the grub screw, I wanted to go about here. So I've um, adjusted chuck, uh, jaws 3 and 4, pushing them in a long way to push the work up out of the way so that the hole's going to come here instead of there. And once I've decided on that position, I will then make adjustments only on two, 1 and 2 and I want to remove a piece of work and put another one in. Um, so these other two jaws will be determining the positioning of the holes. And uh, you probably can't see the centre hole very well there. But here I've got the centre positioned um, about halfway across, a little bit further than halfway across from the centre hole to the edge. And that's where I want the grub screw to go. So um, that's where I'm going to be drilling the hole. And you'll notice that when I turn it on, it all looks awful. I've seen it, it's supposed to be. And the hole will get drilled right there where that point is. So now I'll remove the center, live center piece, and put our drill chuck back in. the key. Center piece. Center drill. Let it chuck. Release the brake. Bring it up to the work. Yeah, I think that's about where I want it. And actually you have to have uh, lined up the um, hole here as well so that's in line with the um, where the uh, drill bit is and there's a hole right here where one of these brass rods fits into it into it there so I know that's in the right spot
this is going to be drilled and tapped, so instead of the quarter inch, I need the 5mm drill ready for a 6mm tap. Of course, there's tables you can look up to find out what size drill to use with different taps, and often it'll come with the tap and die set. I'm going to drill this. I'm going to drill this until I hit the hole where the shaft is supposed to go through. I've got this lined up correctly. It should run into the side of that hole and I'll feel it when I go right through. I don't want coming out the other side of the block. I should have set my um, measurements on the tail stock so I know how deep I'm in. like I did before, um, start the tapping and the chuck and then remove it out and do the rest of the tapping by hand. So I'll do that with this one, then I'll move it around to do the second hole and do it all again. And I've got six more of these to do and each one has two holes, so that's 12 more holes I have to drill.